In the previous build episode, we talked about the importance of accessibility. If you missed that episode, I've included it below. Now, in that episode, we talked about a number of things that you could do to improve your product. In today's episode, we're gonna boil it down to the three main things that you wanna think about when you're designing and building your product. So stay tuned. Welcome to Build, brought to you by Pivotal Tracker. I'm your host, Pornima Vijay Shankar. In each episode, I invite innovators, and together we debunk a number of myths and misconceptions related to building products, companies, and your career in tech. We're continuing our conversation today on accessibility with Laura Allen, who is the Accessibility Program Manager at Google for Chrome and Chrome Operating System. Thanks again for joining us, Laura. Absolutely. Thank you for having me yeah. again. <laughs> so last time we talked about a number of things that our audience can do when they're thinking about designing products or revisiting their products and incorporating more accessibility. Mm -hmm. In today's episode, I want to focus solely on the top three things you think are super critical and will make a big impact in people's products. So let's Great. start with the first. First. OK, yeah. so I would say the first thing to do is to train your team. OK. So thinking about accessibility, it's not just one person's job. And that's something really important to keep in mind. Uh, this is a full team effort. Mm -hmm. There are different roles that different people have to play, from design to research to development to just release processes, all those different things. And everyone needs to play their individual part, to be totally honest with you. So um, a lot of teams just honestly benefit from just going through different trainings, leveraging resources that are out there. Uh, there are a lot of great things. Like, for example, I know a few of my colleagues actually have put together uh, this awesome Udacity course, okay. just all about web accessibility. Uh -huh. uh, that's a great resource. There are lots of videos out there. Um, there's this great YouTube series called the Alleycasts. It's like A11Y, which is a, an abbreviation for accessibility. Mm -hmm. If you've seen that before, it's A11 characters. Y means accessibility. So um, lots of different things out there. And we can definitely link some resources yeah. for sure. But I would say, yes, training the team. Make sure everyone feels comfortable with the concepts of how to start building this in. Um, that'll go a really long way. Nice. So it's not just to put the onus on the designers of the team, but really your PMs, your engineers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So thinking about, for example, like the designers, when you're scoping out a project, mm -hmm. let's incorporate accessibility into design docs. Uh, think about, OK, well, what should the keyboard model actually look like, just as one example? Mm -hmm. What should contrast? Like, am I thinking about contrast in my mocks? Uh, so does that, like, bringing it in at the design phase and then basically like working with your engineers as you're developing testing for accessibility as you're going along um, having pms help to kind of make sure that that process is is happening it's being managed all the way through i think it's really critical so basically having everyone ramped up on this everyone understand the fundamentals is really key wonderful well what's tip number two yeah so tip number two would be to integrate accessibility mm -hmm. so Honestly, I understand why a lot of people might kind of get to the end, be ready to release a product, maybe even release it, and then say, oh, shoot, we forgot about accessibility. Yeah. Maybe they'll get bugs filed against them. And um, that's not the situation that you want to be in. And it's also just not an inclusive way to be building your products. So I think just working hard to integrate into each step of the way. And that's what's helpful to have each different role on your team understand mm -hmm. accessibility, of course. Um, so integrating so that, you know, when you're preparing to launch a product, mm -hmm. that's at the phase. Like when you're actually designing and building it, that's when you're working on these concepts and implementing these principles um, instead of like, okay, we're ready to go. We're going to launch and then, uh oh yeah, <laughs> so integration. In and what's the third and final most important thing people should consider? Yeah, so I would say to engage the users. Okay. And, and this is something that's really important. Again, so just understanding how real assistive technology users or just users with any variety of accessibility needs mm -hmm. are interacting with your product. And one really simple step that I think is, you know, if you're going out and you're conducting user research in the first place, mm -hmm. why not add somebody who's an assistive technology user right to that pool? Um, add someone who's a screen reader user or someone who can only use the keyboard, for example, and can't use a mouse. Like, try to diversify that pool and make sure you're collecting that user feedback and understand how your product is kind of working for a variety of different users. Very nice. So yeah, keeping, keeping the user in mind. And are there places that you can try to recruit from? You know, a lot of people might use something like a user testing. And there's a few other mm -hmm. services out there. But 
anything you would recommend to, to recruit people? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I know we've, we've seen a lot of success with is kind of partnering with mm -hmm. organizations. Okay. So just as one example, we're here in San Francisco yeah. today, uh, the San Francisco Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Okay. That's just one example of a fantastic organization uh, where, you know, they're more than happy to partner with teams mm -hmm. or with individual researchers just to give feedback. They, they want to be helping. They want to make these products even better and better. Um, and there are lots of different types of organizations that are kind of similar similar to that, mm -hmm. um, which you may be kind of local for, for people who are not right here in San Francisco, sure. um, also national organizations, international organizations. Mm -hmm. So just thinking about how do you leverage different communities. And uh, you'll find that oftentimes if you just kind of approach different people and say, hey, we love your feedback on making this better and making mm -hmm. it work better for you. Like, can you help us out? Um, it helps if you're going to go and have one of those conversations, if you've thought through some of these core concepts mm -hmm. and some of the things that are mentioned in the WCAG guidelines and um, you're not showing up without having even considered accessibility, right? Um, but it goes a long way to bring real, real people in, real users in, and just make the products that much better. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for boiling these down into three useful tips. I know our audience is going to get a lot out of this. My pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Now, Laura, and I want to know, have you tried one of these three tips when it comes to incorporating accessibility into your product? Which of these did you try and what was the impact it made? And if you've got others, be sure to include them in the comments below. That's it for this week's episode of Build. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive the next episode where we'll dive into incorporating accessibility into web versus mobile. And special thanks to our sponsor, Pivotal Tracker, for their help in producing this episode. Ciao for now. This episode of Build is brought to you by our sponsor, Pivotal Tracker. Welcome to Femgineer's Confident Communicator course introductory video series. I'm Pornima Vijay Shankar, the founder of Femgineer. And I'm Karen Catlin, a former tech executive who's now an advocate for women who are working in the tech industry. For the last 22 years, I have been speaking in public and for the last eight within the tech industry. I have given a TEDx talk, I've been a guest lecturer at Duke's Pratt School of Engineering, an entrepreneur in residence at 500 Startups, a mentor in residence at Techstars, and was the founding engineer of Mint.com. I am on my second career. In my first career, I spent 25 years building software products. I started out as a software engineer and over time moved to the executive level where I was a vice president at Adobe Systems. Now in my second career, I'm an advocate for women, which means I do a lot of public speaking about diversity, about women's leadership topics, and I've given a TEDx talk. The Confident Communicator course is a live online course that Karen and I co-teach together in this video series, we're going to give you a sense of what the Confident Communicator course is and what you'll get out of it. You'll learn about the challenges Pornima and I have faced learning the craft of public speaking ourselves. You'll learn why we decided we just couldn't keep all of this knowledge to ourselves. And you'll hear from students who have taken the class about how they have become more confident communicators. You're going to get a behind the scenes look at the entire course. You'll meet some past students and see how they went from being shy and nervous to poised and confident communicators. You're also going to meet employers and sponsors who found the course valuable enough to invest in and send their people. And finally, you'll get some sample lessons so you know the material that we're going to be covering. Sign up below to receive the first lesson immediately where you'll understand why it's not good enough to just be heads down you need to speak up to get the recognition you deserve. Ciao for now.